The following is an independently produced community access program. The viewpoints expressed are those of the community access producer and do not reflect those of Shaw Cable Systems. The program is presented in response to CRTC policy guidelines regulating community programming. Hello, bonjour Alberta. Did you know that at least 238,000 people speak Francais in Alberta? And those numbers just keep on growing? Oui, oui, c'est vrai, it's true. And thanks to Shaw TV Community Access Programming, we get to reach out to everyone to let you know all about special people, places, events and activities happening right here in this great province in both English and en français. That's right, mes amis. We begin the first part of our program in English and then we repeat it en français. So stay with us. Restez à l'écoute. Bienvenue and welcome to Hello, Bonjour, Alberta. I'm Anne Boiteau. And I'm Marc Lalonde. And today we welcome uh, Julia Fielding and Kaylin Wood from the Atlas Cold Mine Historical Society. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. And Julia, let's start with you. Okay. Tell us a little bit about you. Where yeah. are you from and what brought you to uh, uh, Drumheller or East Cooley? Okay. Um, I'm originally from the UK, um, from a county called Derbyshire, uh, and I came to Canada to live with my husband um, to seek a new life for my family. Um, and we were living in Ontario, and we came to Drumheller a month ago to work at the Atlas Coal Mine. Ah, very recent in very. Alberta. And you've got a background with coal mines, I understand. I, I do. Uh, my grandfather and my father both worked in mining in Britain. Um, in the deep mines, so yes, it all is linked together beautifully. Good. And Kaylin? Yeah, um, well, I'm working as an interpreter at the Atlas Coal Mine. I don't have a background in mining, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I love mining history. Um, going to school in uh, Ottawa right now, but yeah, summer job. But so you were born in Alberta, were you? I wa yeah, I was born in Alberta. I moved to uh, Quebec when I was four, spent around 13 years there, then went to high school in Ottawa. Yeah. So, forgot to mention that Julia is the executive director for the society, and Kaylin is uh, an interpreter. interpreter. Yeah. First time interpreter for the mm. coal mine. That's right, yeah. Right, great. Mm. So, Julia, tell us a little bit about what's there at East Cooley? What, is, what does the mine look like now? So the mine is uh, an original industrial historic site. It's where the Atlas coal mine originally was. It's got all the original buildings from when the mine owners handed over the keys in 1989 to the Historical Society. So some people when they walk around the site feel it's left, uh, it looks unloved and that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, we are very conscious of saving the stories that the miners left, so we have left the site as was um, for its, its historical relevance. Um, we are a national designated site of national significance because we have a building called a tipple, which is a big wooden building. It's the last remaining tipple in Canada. And what is a tipple? And a tipple is um, a building where the coal was sorted for the different sizes. Okay, okay. And um, why exactly, Kaylin, did we stop coal mining? Uh, well, uh, in 1979, uh, oil and gas kind of came into play. And because our coal is so young, uh, it's only used in home heating, cooking your food, uh, it did. It was used to produce electricity, but people started using oil and gas. It's much easier to change your thermostat than shovel in some coal in the morning. So more environmentally friendly as well, I suppose. Yeah, or yeah. it's a little cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So just lack of demand. But there was a lot of coal produced out of that area, that oh, yeah. Drumheller, these Cooley area. Quite a bit, uh, yeah. 
It, that started when, approximately? Uh, the first mine opened up in 1911. Um, and uh, in 1912, there were around nine mines that were opened up, and it just kind of took off from there. There ended up being about 139 registered mines in the valley, so it's quite a few. Wow. wow. Yeah. And you did bring some artifacts I did. with you today. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Sure. Uh, all right, I'll start off with this. So this is one of the uh, earliest caps that were used to hold your carbide lamp on. And that's its purpose, is to hold a carbide lamp. Uh, as you can see, it's made of fabric. It's really not going to protect you very much. No. Uh, they stopped using these in around 1925 okay. when they switched over to these. So this helmet. Hard shell. Yeah. So that'll provide a little bit more protection for you. It's made of a material called Bakelite. So this is pre-modern plastics. Um, and uh, yeah, still not great, but better than those fabric caps. When they're using and these... On the, on the front of the helmet is... Yeah, this is actually uh, a carbide lamp. So before battery packs, they used open flame lamps, which as you can imagine, On poses. your head? But yeah, on your head, <laughs> in a coal mine, methane gas, a little bit of a dangerous thing there. A little extra heat too, I would think. Yep, <laughs> yeah, and the bottom gets pretty hot. Mm. Um, now, if you were a coal miner, you would have to keep your carbide somewhere. So this is a carbide canister calcium carbide would go in here. When you mix water with calcium carbide, it produces acetylene gas, and that's flammable. So that's what produces the flame. So uh, that's what this is. Um, now, the last thing is a dynamite canister. So this is a dynamite canister. Um, they did use dynamite underground, only for a time though. Eventually, they switched to something known as cardox tubes, so the explosions were contained in metal tubes. This is actually repurposed as a lunchbox. <laughs> so <laughs> many, many different purposes there. <laughs> yeah. yeah yes. so those, are, those are some of the artifacts. Uh, and I understand you're going to show us how to light up one of those little lamps. For lights. sure. Yeah. You want to see that now? Definitely. Yeah. All right. Show us that. I'm going to... Uh, just have a little table here. Okay, so this one works. Uh, this one doesn't really work anymore. Keep in mind these are artifacts. Mm -hmm. So how old? Uh, this, this actually would have been used all the way back in the 1800s. Wow. Yeah, they stopped using them in the 40s um, because there was a mining disaster. It might have been from one of these things. Uh, but yeah, so it's quite old, over 100 years old. Uh, all right, so this is calcium carbide. Looks pretty boring, uh, just kind of looks like gravel. Um, but like I say, when you mix it with water, some magic happens. Uh, now, if I was a coal miner, I would fill this entire bottom compartment full of this chemical, and that would last me about four hours. So if I was working an eight-hour shift, I'd have to refill once during lunch, and I'd be good to go. So I have some water in the top here, and I have a dial, so I can control how much water drips in the bottom. Look at that, yeah. And I, I get that gas, right? Yeah. So there's, there's the gas. And the more I turn this dial, the more gas comes out here, and now I have a little flint here. So I just capture the gas, and there we go. Jeez. Got a flame. Oh, wow. And so you just pop this on your helmet, head underground, mine some coal. Mine wow. it all up. That's what they used back in the good old days. <laughs> Pretty amazing. That must have been a lot of fun to learn how to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a fun, fun training period. <laughs> yeah. No doubt, no doubt. So this is the, the brightness. So the more you move that, it ah. doesn't quite work as well as it should, but yeah. How do you turn it off? <laughs> <laughs> high tech. Yeah, yeah high for tech. sure. There's oh, well, thank uh, you for showing uh, thank us you. that. That's, uh, You're welcome. That's all very, very interesting. interesting. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Julia, mm -hmm. can you tell us about some of the uh, some of the programs? I, I mean, this is a historical site that is open to the public to come and visit. 
Right. And I understand that you have regular, different regular tours that happen, and you also have something special coming up at the end of October. We do. So at the moment, we are running our daily tours, so people can go in the tunnel, which is where you walk underground, walk up the steps that the miners would have walked. Um, the, ton um, the gantry is 210 feet long, um, and so you are well underground. And then we also have a train tour. Uh, it doesn't go underground, but the train was what they brought the coal, took the miners into the mine and brought the coal out. So you can have a ride on the train, or you can also go in the tipple and discover the stories of the miners. Um, so that's at the moment. And then at the end of October, we have the Haunted Atlas. And this is when the whole mine gets taken over by ghosts and ghouls. Um, and we have Big Boo for the people who are a bit braver. Um, and that's uh, on the Saturday, the 18th and 25th of October. And then for the more timid souls, we have Baby Boo, which is uh, <laughs> just for the little ones. And you also do some other kind of fundraising uh, over the year as We well. do. We have um, an event called An Evening at Fanny's, which is about the more seedier side of life as coal miners. Um, and it talks about gambling and um, how miners spent their earnings. <laughs> it's a fun evening. Say no more. Say no more, yes. indeed. Say no more. <laughs> yes. I was just going to say that uh, smell is pretty awful. Yeah. <laughs> you can still smell the acetylene yeah. in the yeah. air. Yeah. We'll just oh. try not to pass on, <laughs> pass out, or, or pass on. That's even worse. <laughs> so how about, how about some stories? Uh, obviously, there's, there's, there's ghost stories, all kinds of stories of things yeah. that have happened in, in the mine uh, that you tell to people who come by. Can you give us an example? Hmm. Well, I think some of my favorite stories are of the new guys, the rookies, who used to work at the coal mine. Uh, so Bob Moffat, a miner that I know, still around today, uh, he told me that um, the conveyor belts that is used to uh, transport the coal from the mine entrance to the tipple uh, was sometimes used to transport coal miners from the, the <laughs> mine entrance to the tipple. However, they were not allowed to do this, right? It's a very dangerous thing to do. Uh, but if you were a, a newbie, a rookie, you'd be complaining all day about how hard the work was. And the older guys had kind of had enough of this, right? So I'd say, ah, well, buddy, it's the end of the day. Got to walk all the way back down the stairs. So I have a proposition for you. How about you hop on this conveyor belt? It'll take you two minutes to get to the bottom. No problem. You have the first showers. You'd be out of here in no time. So they'd hop on, go bumping on down. And uh, the only problem was they didn't know where to get off. And they're going really fast, about eight <laughs> kilometers per hour. Uh, and eventually, you know, <coughs> the conveyor ends and you come to the tipple. In the tipple, there's shaker screens, which shake back and forth about two and a half times per second. <laughs> so they'd fall onto the shaker screens. And according to Bob, it's very funny to watch someone try to get off a shaker screen <laughs> once you're on. Yeah, so stories like that. There's, uh, there's other ones uh, that happened underground. Um, but I, I won't go into it. <laughs> you got you got to come to the atlas yeah. if you want to. Yeah, yes, to yeah. find out. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. So you are just outside of Drumheller, just to make sure people we know are, where you are. Yeah, we're 20 minutes down Highway 10 on east. So you drive along the river. It's a beautiful drive past the hoodoos, and then you can't miss us. The tipple stands there and for everyone to see. Are you open all year round? Or? No, we're open till Thanksgiving weekend. So we open okay. May till October. Okay, okay. And are you coming back, Kaylin, <laughs> next year? <laughs> I'd love to, um, if my plans permit. I'll okay. see. But if, if I can, definitely. And you're going back to <laughs> finish your studies <laughs> in Ottawa? Um, right now, this year, I'm going to be with Canada World Youth doing some volunteer work in Indonesia. Uh, but yes, I do plan to go back to my studies. Ah, very yeah. good. <laughs> well, we thank you very much for joining us. It was a very interesting uh, demonstration. I can still <laughs> smell the... Uh, <laughs> whatever that was <laughs> <laughs> and we hope that everyone will be uh, going over to take a look at the mine it's very interesting mm -hmm. and for all of you out there we continue en français